Hey everyone, welcome to the show. I'm Lee Schneider, your host. If you can hear in the background, it's a pretty blustery day out here in Wisconsin. It's a good day to be in the garage going through the fishing gear. Which leads us into today's show. Last year, uh, in the summer, I went out with a friend of mine, Mike Dahl, who has a nice 33-foot boat. Um, and we had it out on Lake Michigan to go after some cohos and kings. In the first half of the show, you're going to see my wife Nancy and I go after the cohos. We ended up in about 200 feet of water and we had quite a bit of action. So let's roll the footage and see how everything turned out. Before we went out, I asked Mike to stop by the house to talk a little bit about cohos. Um, I know the weather has been kind of up and down leading up to this here, but you said now the cohos are starting to hit, but you were saying something about they were pretty far out. Yeah, there has uh, been reports uh, up to 400 feet, which is pushing 15 miles depending on which direction you're heading. Uh, that's a long way to go to catch a few fish, but the guys that have been going out there also are catching their uh, uh, good catches of rainbows. So okay. Okay. Um, it's, it's kind of a nice uh, double platter if you can get out far enough um, and find the right school, you can uh, do very well okay. generally. And coho is now, there's some confusion and difference between coho and kings. Sure. What, what's the difference? Can you explain that? Technically size. Um, the cohos uh, generally run quite a bit smaller, upward, you know, an up, a nice size coho would be 10 pounds. Okay. Where a uh, king, they can, they can get 30, 35 pounds. Depends how much uh, forage there is in the lake and, and how well uh, they're able to feed in that four years. Okay, all right. So when you go after the cohos, what what kind of equipment do you use for that? Uh, I generally will run, uh, I love dipsy divers. Uh, however, a lot of times the dipsies, my dipsies don't seem to produce as well for cohos as, as like a rainbow. Uh, for whatever reason, the uh, rainbows like the uh, short leads uh, on dipsy runs. But generally, a uh, two to three color uh, in lead core, which means uh, for every color, um, it drops five feet. So a two color would, of course, drop 10, and then a three color would be 15. Okay. So, and, and generally, the coals will be somewhere in that, that top 30 feet. So, but generally, you'll see the uh, planer boards start listing back. Um, not in its normal spread, and when I say the planer boards, that's what we're running our lead cores off of. Okay. And you'll have the three boards on each side, and they'll stagger, you know, appreciably out as you get farther and farther out. So all of a sudden, you'll see one drifting back a little bit, and then it's time to at least at minimum go check it. Okay. Um, okay. So bait wise, what? Uh, I see. You know, I see you got some some dodgers there. Yep. They'll be different sizes and stuff, but. Um, is this kind of what we're going to be using when we go out for the cohos? Yeah, that, this would be this would be the go-to bait all the time for cohos. Okay. Um, they get later in the season, and then you can start picking up more on spoons. Um, but all in all, if, if there was a, if I was going to uh, go fishing, and and they said you get to use one item on cohos, this is it right here. Okay, this is it. Uh, the fly dodger combination. Yep, it's a peanut fly. Um, and of course there's all different colors, um, this one here is kind of my favorite right there. It's a blue tinsely uh, chrome, there again it's a, a zero dodger. Um, yeah, they're, the ladies like them because they're pretty. So, <laughs> well, yeah, my wife's going to be a long and she'll think they're really cool. Oh yes, <laughs> yes they're very pretty. It's, but the more important thing is they got to catch fish. Oh, they and they do. If you're looking for a place to go in Ontario with wonderful accommodations, a sandy beach to dig your toes in, or awesome bass and walleye fishing, Dog Lake Resort, just northwest of Thunder Bay, is the place for you. You can also choose to go with Black Bear Adventures and chase that black bear of a lifetime. Bonfires and beautiful sunsets are the norm here.
This segment brought to you by Carbon Synergy, the ultimate in scent control, beat them scentless, and by Pro Hunter Archery Sights and Accessories, featuring single pin slide and multi pin sights. By Icotech, dead serious game calls and decoys. And also by Bow Dagger, the all in one bow stabilizer and bow stand. We stand up for your bow. Well, Mike had the Fixin' Salmon Attitudes boat ready for us when we got there. My wife and I jumped on board, we made our way out of the harbor, and then we motored out to about 120 feet. We then started setting up lines and slowly made our way out, but once we reached the 200 foot mark, the action picked up. Must ring the ship's bell. That yeah, wakes him up. All right. Say, get it going. Yeah. <laughs> you want your, uh... Oh, she's there right there, huh? When he gets up close, we're going to have to hold him way up in the air. Keep going. Way up. Keep reeling. You can. Keep going. Perfect, 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 perfect. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. There you go. We got him, Nancy. Grabber, Nance. Catching fish, we're killing flies. Good pastime, I got. Thank you. There we go. Ready? Right up. There we go. Not huge, but. 
but making its way to the horizon, we decided to pull up the lines and make our way back to shore. We ended up with eight fish on the night, ranging in size from four pounds to 10 pounds. Thank you, Mike Dahl, for a great night of fishing on Lake Michigan. Serious game calls and decoys. Hi, I'm John with Grand Prairie Outdoors, and we're in the GRO education plot in the Columbus, Wisconsin area. And behind you, you're going to see a wet area that we kind of call the duck pond. So we do also sell habitat mixes. What's behind you was actually a mix that we call uh, buck and bird. It actually has three millets. It has a little bit of buckwheat. It's got a little sorghum. And so you have the, the uh, uh, Japanese millet, brown top millet, German millet. We had buckwheat. And then we also had another, uh, the WGF grain sorghum in there. So it could be dual purpose. Could be a win emergency winter feed for the deer. Um, emergency uh, winter feed for the turkeys and the birds and it's also a good little mix that will tolerate these wet areas which we got here. In the background we actually got the river that goes through here. This area kind of um, washes in and floods in here with a bunch of water and so again look for um, that as an option for you guys that also want to hold birds on your property. Look for it in our habitat area. This segment brought to you by ProTracker, the ultimate tracking and recovery system. Ultra Pro X cameras. The adventure starts here. Boning Archery, your archery equipment source since 1946. And Pete Shoe Dryer, we invented dry. Well, as you can see, my wife and I had a blast. In the second half of the show here, staffer Hank Lawrence and myself went out with Mike again, and this time we were after King Salmon. We didn't have to go out near as far. We ended up in about 50 or 55 feet of water. The weather conditions were about the same. We didn't have a lot of wind. It was pretty calm. The only thing different was is we were fishing the full moon, so we wanted to fish a little bit later. So we headed out after work, and we got set up just before dark. Once we hit that magical time, the action kicked in. 
let's see how that night went. Okay, it's mid-July. We're out fishing on Lake Michigan with Captain Fluffy here. Hi. And uh, we're fishing, we're doing an evening fish here. Um, we're trying to catch some king salmon. Um, you were out last night, you yes. said, right? You had yep. four. Um, yes. But they've been hitting pretty pretty good. Uh, step over here a little oh, bit. Sorry. Say hi to the camera. Oh, you said you've been hitting pretty good all the while along here. Yeah, we've uh, we've did very well in the last month. Uh, the kings have come along tremendously, and uh, full moon tonight. We should spank them. Should. Well, we got the perfect conditions for it. You can't. You ain't gonna see Lake Michigan much flatter than this. No. <laughs> very rarely do you, anyways. So I guess we're uh, gonna sit back, folks, and we're gonna wait for the rods to start flying. Or bodies, whatever. <laughs> Get them. Get them. That's right. Um, down riggers. Um, of course, this is your weight. There's all kinds of different models and shapes and sizes. You can see this one looks like a banana. Um, some people think you got to have pancakes. Others think you got to have the round ball like you see there next to you. But uh, as long as it gets the line down, and you can see here, what we're doing here is we're going to and 40 feet of water and we got pretty cold water in so I'm gonna go down this time about 20 feet 21 actually on this one and we're gonna set the rod clicker on get a good bend on it that way when the fish hits you'll actually see the rod tip do this before he takes it hopefully and if not you'll just hear the drag Putting out board, lead core. There's every 10 yards of lead core, the line will sink five feet. So this should take the line down 15 feet when it's all the way back where it belongs. And it's not exact science, but it's pretty close. Cold water like this, you want to have uh, a lot of the stuff near the surface. We had 92 at home today. What's up, man? Well, we'll see if it pays out.
This segment brought to you by Ghost Blind, Not Seeing is Believing. By Grandpa Ray Outdoors, we're not about fancy bags. We are about complete whitetail nutrition. Ohio Paracord and Bulwarks. Dog Lake Resort, your vacation spot in Ontario for family and sportsmen. And by Game Changer, a new and exciting way to hunt turkeys. Shoot them in self-defense. Hank had hooked into a nice fish and he fought this fish for about 20 minutes. <laughs> ding, ding, ding! Oh no. Uh -oh. Keep going. Keep reeling. Keep reeling. Oh, there we go. Bottom one. Boats out there. Oh, we're good. Got him. Got him. Nice job, buddy. Okay, let some line out. Okay. We're going to climb forward, Mike. Okay. Love it. <laughs> that light is lovely. Really like that. Plenty of Let's uh, you just, you just follow with me. Left the line off. Okay. Okay. Right bring there. Yep. Right up. Bring him right to me. Ready? Yeah. Nice job, guys. <laughs> As I had said in the intro, the action got fast and furious. By the end of the night, we had eight total fish, and we went back into the harbor to clean them up. Thanks, Mike Dahl, for a great time on the water. Stop starting out sopping wet. Start using a peat dryer. Do what you like best in the soothing comfort of peat dry, a peculiar kind of dryness that effectively removes wet and sweat from all boots. You feel better. Your boots last longer. Pete is easy to use and what you want. Go to www.petedryer.com and start feeling better. Pete, the original boot dryer and still the best.